All right, so this is the cockpit of the uh, MH-65 Charlie helicopter. Um, this is the co-pilot station. Pilot stations on the right. Typically, the pilot um, in command will sit in the right seat for any major you know, search and rescue or LE evolution. And I'll just start at the top and kind of to kind of go down the start airspeed. This is uh, an ADI, which gives us the attitude of the aircraft. Um, you can see we have these yellow command bars. Those will come on to the ADI when we have our flight director hooked up. So typically what you're seeing here is we'd have attitude hold and, um, and heading select. So the aircraft, we can program in exactly what heading we want the aircraft to fly and what altitude and the aircraft can hold that completely hands off. And I noticed that's on both sides. On exactly. Both. Yeah, you can pretty much split the cockpit down the middle and you're going to have the same gauges on both sides for the most part. Um, this is our rad out uh, radar out. Sorry, I'm going to talk a lot of acronyms. Stop me if I'm going. No problem. <laughs> okay. So the radar altimeter, which is really important to us as Coast Guard pilots because we typically fly offshore and that tells us exactly how high off we are the ocean at any time. So like I tell the guys when, when we're training, as long as this needle is above zero, you're in the air. When it's below zero, you're a submarine, which isn't a good thing. So what I do as a technique, pretty much any time I'm offshore, I will go, I'll leave the uh, barometric altimeter and fly the rat out because that'll tell me exactly how high I am off now, the Now when you're in a hover with the... Uh the wet crewmen, do you guys coordinate verbally how high you are? Uh, exactly. Uh huh. Yep, okay. and we have certain altitude restrictions anytime we deploy a swimmer. And again, with that, I'll use the, uh, the rat out to, to give me my height. This is your typical barometric altimeter. When we're being controlled by air traffic control, shooting instrument approaches or stuff, I'll transition from the rat out to the bear out. And that keeps me, you know, legal airspace-wise and altitude-wise with ATC. What about traffic collision avoidance? Is this equipment? We do. We have a TCAS, yeah, TCAS which okay. is going to be here uh, with no power on the on the aircraft. It's going to be hard to see. Yeah. And this this is a multi-function function display, so we can get radar, um, HSI page, a circle map, which will give me a depiction of all the airports, nav aids, um, particular marked points out in the ocean and then different waypoints. All that will show up. And then um, once we get FLIR equipped on this aircraft, we will have FLIR imagery up on this screen as well. And that's on dual on both stations. Exactly. Fine. This is a um, warning caution advisory panel. Understand, okay. This is just purely a clock and stopwatch. Bearing distance indicator, which we use as a backup for our navigation for instrument approaches and stuff like that. Our fuel panel, we have two fuel systems on this aircraft. We can transfer fuel from left to right. And how many tanks are here on the aircraft? We have five tanks. Five tanks. Five tanks. Um, so we can transfer in between tanks, the two main tanks, and then we can also jettison fuel for um, urgent SAR case or urgent mission. We're authorized to jettison fuel. I haven't done it in, in years, but it, it is a a tool we have. Now I'm looking at the center panel, you have your computer entry boards here. Exactly. This cockpit display unit, the Rockwell Collins. So all of our, um, our fuel data we can get on this, engine parameters we can get on this machine, our flight plans are programmed on this, um, all our radios are programmed here, our navigation aid selection is on this, transponder is included in this device. Um, all kinds of stuff. Search patterns. When we were talking about hovering, hovering yeah, I can um, program the aircraft to fly completely hands off to a 50 foot hover. And that'll be inserted using this CDU. Excellent. And they're, th these are identical. Now, does, a, does this unit have some sort of memory hold um, where if you type in for the mission, it stays for the entire mission? Or is it something exactly. Else? It does. Great. And then coming down here in the middle. Okay, this is the call um, we call the, the center panel. Yeah, this is the flight director system. So you can see, um, and I can just with one push of the button, um, we can it'll hold indicated airspeed, vertical speed. So which is we don't really use vertical speed a lot, but you could use it to to get glide slope on an approach. It'll hold you know four to five hundred feet per minute, whatever you program. Altitude hold, heading select. Once heading selects engaged, it's going to hold that heading, and you can turn the entire aircraft using this knob here. Just like that, huh? Just that knob. 
This is nav, which means the aircraft's going to navigate for you completely but hands that, off. Utilizing that knob that you just showed me, that would be on a hover hold? No, on forward flight. Forward flight. In forward flight. So typically, let's say we're going um, offshore 50 miles for a search and rescue case. So you're busy, you know, working the radios, talking with sector to get all the information on the on the case. We just dial up heading select altitude hold, program it for about 120 knots. The aircraft will fly straight and level wherever you put the heading indicator. Interesting. Completely hands off. If you need to turn, you just left or right there. Course. So this will give you a direct to your first pattern waypoint. Okay, waypoint. Exactly. So this is the. Um, Put me on the spot here. This is going to be the controller for the pilot. This one will be for the, the co pilot. Understand. So these two boxes are identical. And same thing with these two boxes. These are our comms boxes. Right. So we have three operating radios which we can use for air traffic control. Scene. Um, then we have HF radio. We don't have it at Miami, but um, other units have SATCOM capabilities. Is HF that something ALE. that's going to eventually come to Miami, the SATCOM capability? Uh, uh, maybe, possibly, possibly. The aircraft's rigged up for it, we just need authorization to use it. I see. And then down here is our radar control instrument. Seems like a pretty straightforward cockpit. It's, uh... Yeah, very manageable. Um, very well organized. It's uh, how do you find the workload in flight or doing an actual mission? Uh, is it something that is evenly proportioned between the left and right seats? Yeah, typically the guy in the right seat has more fun than the guy in the left seat. <laughs> Usually the um, the star case is run from the person in the left seat and, and the guy in the right seat. Excuse me. Um, just mainly does the flying. So the way the Coast Guard does it is the flying pilot will just fly the aircraft. Right. The non-flying pilot talks on the radios and runs the mission, essentially. I think that comes down to the CRM of the whole mission. Exactly. Exactly. Well, that's it. And then we got here the, the collective, and looking at it, you have your basics. Uh... Yep, this is a shear switch. It's a, you know, locked button. And what that'll do is if we have to jettison the hoist cable, we could just Flip, oh, so good, okay. flip that button and then cut it loose. It cuts it loose, exactly. And that's, on both, and that's on both collectives? No, just on just this collective. On, just that one. And they'll have they'll have shear authority in the back on the hoist control station as well. This is our search landing hover light. This will control the slew of the lights. Right. A hover beep switch. When we're coupled up on the uh, flight director in a hover, if you want to go down or or come up, just hit this switch one click and that gives you three feet. Okay. So if I want to go up at three feet, I just beep it up. If I want to go down three feet, I can beep it down. Interesting. And then looking on the overhead, I'll start here on the left. Cabin lights for night. We can light the um, the inside of the cabin or we can simply arm emergency lighting. Understand? If we land at a certain G limit, the cabin lights will automatically come on. We've got anti-collision lights, position lights, these are the rheostats for all our instrumentation lighting. Um, again, instrument lighting is the master switch for the instrument lighting. This is hoist authority, so if, when the flight mechanic wants to slew the boom, mm -hmm. we give him hoist authority in the back, and that gives his panel control to maneuver the hoist boom. Cargo hook, not always installed in the aircraft, but we can hoist up to two. The, the hook's rated at 2,000 pounds. We have an avionics fan to give cooling air to our avionics heat, ECS. The NR switch that we were talking about earlier will give uh -huh. us 10 extra turn on the uh, main rotor head. A hydraulic isolation valve there. We've got to test, when we're starting the aircraft, we can test our chip lights. Oh, the engine both, chip lights? Yeah, both uh -huh. tail gearbox chip lights and engine chip <coughs> lights. We have windscreen anti-ice, pitot heat. Oral horn, master switch, trim, and windshield wipers. Excellent. And then the handles here, you have the yellow and red. All right, this is our rotor brake. Uh huh. So when we're coasting down or doing shipboard type ops, you can activate that rotor brake and it'll slow the rotor system down. 
These are our emergency fuel shot up levers. Got it. And these are our FADEC control switches. Oh, so it's the engine is fully FADEC. Exactly. Excellent. Well, that's fantastic. And now, how do you find the uh, the seats and comfort for these long missions? You are know, I really don't have a whole lot of complaints with these seats. They're they're pretty comfortable. Our typical mission is about you know anywhere between two and a half to three hours, so you can stretch it out. But you will notice a lot of us old. 65 drivers have, are suffering for some back problems. So, but yeah, really, really no complaints at all. It's, it's a pretty, pretty comfortable aircraft. How is the flying. vibration in flight? Is, is this thing really shakes and rattles? No, minimal. No, minimal. It's the smoothest aircraft I've ever flown, helicopter wise. Well, Lieutenant yeah, Commander really, really Armstrong, thank you. Ride. Thank you for the interview. And uh, this is Benny from the 94th Federal Claims Aviation Consultant Group here at Miami Station, Opelika. All right, you're welcome.